Do you like World War II guns? I like World War II guns. Now, when you think about 45s from World War II, you usually think about the 1911. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today, we got a real treat for you, and R45 is actually a submachine gun in the form of the M3 Grease Gun. Let's check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, the M3A1 grease gun. And if you can't tell by now, it's clearly not the kind of grease gun that you can buy at Home Depot anymore. We used to be a proper country. What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers and welcome back where we have a grease gun for you as a treat. This is specifically the M3A1 grease gun. It is an American World War II submachine gun chambered in the Lord's caliber 45 ACP. My two world wars, brother. Pretty sure you can tell how it got its nickname as it looks very much like an old grease gun. But you know, instead of greasing squeaky wheels, it just greased the enemy. This one I have in my hands, uh, it's, it's actually a pretty funny story, was made by Guidelamp, AKA the Guidelamp division of General Motors. Yeah, yeah, this is a GM gun. Yes, that GM. As you can probably imagine, World War II was kind of an all hands on deck situation for American manufacturing. So a lot of American companies stepped up and started producing things like tanks and weapons. By the way, very impolite to ask Volkswagen what they were doing during this period. Yeah. Fun fact, Guidelamp was also producing the stamped Liberator pistols, which, you know, topic for another day, but fun fact. Now, if you wish that American companies weren't so busy trying to be as woke as they possibly fucking can and do based shit, like build tons of submachine guns, First of all, join the fucking club. Second of all, literally, join, join the fucking club. Subscribe. You sound like our kind of people. We like you here. Anyhow, in this video, I'm going to tell you how this thing operates. We're gonna rip her apart and just show you how the gun actually works. I'm gonna tell you why the grease gun in particular kind of holds a special place in my heart. A little bit of sentimental value. We're also gonna keep shooting stuff because that's always fun. First, I'm gonna tell you how to operate the grease gun. First thing we're gonna wanna do is pull our stock out here. There's no lever or anything like that. You just pretty much rip the stock out. Now, if you wanted to retract the stock, all you have to do is press this little button here and then push it in pretty easy, but we'll keep it extended for now. The next we have our magazine release, which is on the left side of the magwell here. It's this little button, which has a nice little shroud around it. So you can still ha have a pretty good grip on the gun while you're shooting it without worrying about accidentally detaching your magazine. As it turns out, bad thing to do in combat. So you press this button, your magazine comes right on out. Now to actually charge the gun and make it ready to fire, we've got to flip up our dust cover here. As you can see here, now that our dust cover's up, we have two divots in our bolt, but we don't have a charging handle. A am I missing a part? Well, no, not quite. The solution was to stick a thumb in it. Yeah, kind of literally. You, you just take your finger and you just pull the bolt back like so. So easy a Marine could do it, and plenty of them did. Now there is a different variant of the grease gun that did actually have a real charging handle, uh, kind of like levered back and you just rack the bolt that way. Uh, but they ended up doing away with that for the much simpler stick a fucking divot in the bolt method. What's also neat is that this dust cover acts as our safety. Obviously when you have the bolt forward, uh, this little hook here locks in there and you can't access it anyway. So that's pretty easy. You know, you're not going to be firing the gun. It's an open bolt. But if we pull the dust cover open and charge the gun, now when we pull the trigger, the bolt drops forward. But this little hook here will actually grab in that divot in the bolt and prevent you from firing the gun until you bring it back open. Now it works again. Quoting the movie Fury, now you killing, now you ain't. The sights on this bad boy are almost as bad as the Sten. It's literally just a peephole sight here in the rear that you line up the center of this little front sight post blade up front. So yeah, once you have your bolt here to the rear, uh, it, again, it hangs back because this is an open bolt uh, submachine gun. You pull the trigger and then the bolt slams forward, slam firing around. And as long as you have your finger 
uh, on the trigger and the trigger pulled, it's going to keep cycling back and forth until you run out of ammo or you let your finger off the trigger. Or you die. Don't die. Turns out, ladies and gents, we found ourselves some Nazi white claws. Yeah, I know that's the wrong movie, but it's the right actor. Liberating Europe in three, two, one. Can never be too sure. That might have been a war crime, but uh, shit happens in the heat of passion, Jimbo. Well, unsurprisingly, our White Claw did not stand a chance. He got some nice exit and entrance wounds there. Blowing these right on apart. It's one thing 45 really does have going for it. You know, it's not quite as fast and it doesn't have a lot of armor pen. Long distance, you're not gonna get much out of it, but damn, does it have a lot of mass to it. If you wanna put a lot of energy into something pretty quickly, 45, not a bad way to do it. I just need to show you guys the absolute fucking size of the mosquitoes we are dealing with today. Holy shit. This is what happens when you get rain in Texas, friends. So some interesting stuff about the grease gun. It was originally designed in 1942, but really wasn't produced and fielded until 1943. Even though being fielded in 1943 would mean it only saw use in the last two years of the war, we still built over 600,000 of these things. Obviously, as you can tell from the, you know, kind of basic clamshell construction, they were not that expensive. In fact, there's a lot of estimates, but it seems somewhere around $15 per unit. This is a $15 submachine gun when it was built. In 2023, I can't get a fucking cheeseburger for $15. A good cheeseburger. Now, of course, that's not accounting for inflation. Uh, that would be somewhere along the lines of like $200, $250 nowadays. Still, a full auto 45 ACP submachine gun for roughly about 200 something dollars, not that bad. Now, quick thing I do wanna to touch on, this has always been one of my unicorn guns. I have always wanted a grease gun. So my great grandfather was actually a combat engineer in the Pacific during World War II. He would later go on to fight in Korea and do a lot of other things with his life, including basically raising my father. Unfortunately, I, I never got to meet the man, but from what, what I've always heard from, from my dad and other family members is he absolutely fucking loved the grease gun. See, they would give these to a lot of, you know, the combat dozer guys and, you know, even tankers and whatnot because they were nice and compact, you know? This is a lot shorter than say, like having a Thompson or something like that. Nice and easy. And if you really need it, very, very easy to operate. Apparently, he loved it, which is, you know, good news for me because the fact that this was able to bring him through his time in one of the bloodiest conflict zones in the last hundred years, that's, that's good news for my family lineage and the fact that I'm still here today, or here at all, rather. So in a roundabout way, there's a good chance that the grease gun was never created, I may not be here. Maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but it's still weird to think about. This is getting a little deep, let's go to the range. So now we're gonna do a little experiment. We've got some soft armor here from Bulletproof Everyone. And uh, well, we've got a ballistic gel torso over there. So here we have our soft armor, it's level 3A, so it's rated to stop 45. This is actually a front and back panel and it's super flexible, super easy to actually like conceal and whatnot. It's rated to stop 45 and luckily, I know a little submachine gun that is chambered in 45. So let's test it out. If it'll go fucking over it. All right, let's see how she fares against 45. So many fucking mosquitoes. All right, so we couldn't have gotten a much better impact right here. And I can, oh, I can feel the bullet. It's caught in the armor. Yep, so I feel it on the other side. You can see there actually, that's cool, where the bullet is caught in the fabric. Let's see if I can pull that out. It's fucking hot. I'm, yeah, surprise, surprise. I always knew my pullout game was shit, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> wow. There you have it. A mushroom stamped 45 ACP. It's kind of cool. So no surprise it held up to 45. Let's see how it does to a lot of 45. Ah, one more for good measure. Two more. All right, that should do. So a lot of ripped fabric. And this thing is bunched up. Like it, it took a lot of energy just now. 
But if we check our plate here, even though it's kind of shredded up a little bit, that's not penetration. That's just the cloth here. It's getting ripped up with all the force of the impact, but it stopped all of them. You could feel the bullets just kind of loosely <laughs> in the armor. That's kind of neat. Yeah, our cloth is a little shredded, but like I said, there's no bullet holes. There's no entrances. For being as light as it is, this armor is pretty fucking tough, but let's see if it's 12 gauge buckshot tough. Really just for shits and giggles, to be honest. That should do it. All right, well, that's clear as shit, our, our impact right here. Damn, okay, so we once again have a big impact here. You could clearly see where those holes are. You could feel it stopped and it's shredding the fabric back here but I still don't think we have an exit. That is hot, that is actually warm to the touch. Just the, the fabric. Now you can see, still no penetration through here. Don't get me wrong, this guy just absorbed so much energy in his chest that he's going to be shitting blood for the next two weeks, but he didn't get shot. Well, he wasn't shot before. Now he is. Yeah, you see all those little channels in here? You got our entrances in the front, our exits in the back. Each one of those was 45 calibers of enemy discouragement. I kind of felt like I had to do that. I don't know why, just sitting up too nice. So big thanks to Bulletproof everyone for sending these out. They're kind of neat. This is uh, it's super lightweight, super concealable. They also have a bunch of other stuff there on their website. It's pretty rad. Also willing to hook you guys up because if you go to their website and use the code Herrera with the purchase of any of their ballistic clothing, you'll actually get some free backpack armor, which is pretty cool. We appreciate them sponsoring the video. Now it's time to break down the grease gun. So one of the things that's weird about the disassembly of this gun is if you look in the rear where this would normally be, you know, you unscrew a cap or, you know, you find a way to you know, remove the bolt. Uh, this is welded shut which means the disassembly of this gun actually is done from the front. So let's remove our magazine real quick once again. But before I solve that problem, if stuff like this, the gun design elements are interesting to you and you'd like to get your start in gunsmithing and weapons design, I'd recommend checking out SDI, the Sonoran Desert, Desert Institute, our main channel sponsor. I'm gonna leave the links down below for them just like we did for Bulletproof Everyone. We appreciate their help because it allows us to buy cool stuff like grease guns. We've got a barrel that is ratcheted in. So what we're going to do is take this little tab here. This is kind of like a spring that just keeps tension on that. Pull this back and then we're gonna rotate our barrel and it just unthreads. And there is your grease gun barrel. They also had different variants of these where they had like barrels that were integrally suppressed, which is pretty rad because 45 ACP is pretty much already subsonic anyway perfect fit for like an internal suppressor. So now that we've done that, our bolt assembly pretty much just falls out the front here. Uh, we have our spring assembly here, which is pretty cool because it pretty much stays static. This stays in the front and the bolt just kind of rides front to back in a little channel here, which is kind of neat. Let me pull this back so I can show you the bolt face itself. Uh, there we've got the bolt face with our extractor on the top there and our channel in the bottom cut for our ejector. And yeah, it's a tube. They're pretty simple. Direct blowback open bolts of machine guns, of course, don't need any sort of gas system or, or recoil system or anything like that because basically what you're doing is using the weight of the bolt instead of any sort of lockup. Whereas like rifle rounds and packages like, you know, the AR-15, the AK, what have you, uh, they require lockup to not explode. Some machine guns are usually so low pressure that you can just get away with using a hefty ass bolt and a decent spring and that pretty much just works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. At least until HK comes along, creates the MP5. That was a pretty okay example of fixing something that wasn't broke. Now we're just gonna go ahead and put this back in. There we go. And the bolt just slides right back. I'm gonna grab the barrel here. Just screw it back down. You hear that biting? And we're good. Ready to get back to killing. Hey guys, sorry, I totally forgot to mention this while we were filming the video, but one of the more notable things about firing the grease gun is how controllable it is. 
You see with this being a 45, you imagine there'd be a good bit of recoil. But because the cyclic rate on this gun is so low, it is one of the easiest machine guns to shoot and keep on target. Even with its crude construction, questionable ergos by modern standards, and iron sights that are there, I have no trouble keeping this on target. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention that, considering that is one of the uh, things that really stands out about firing this gun. So back to past me. Well guys, that's the grease gun. Hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I know I got to share a little bit of why this is kind of a special gun for me, why it's kind of always been a unicorn, you know? I'm happy to have it in my collection. The collection keeps growing more and more every week. And for that, I thank you guys so much for continuing to watch, subscribe, and support the channel. If there's any other historic guns that you would like to see us pick up and shoot, please let me know down in the comments. I do read them every once in a while, no matter how bad it is for my mental health, but that's okay. I appreciate you guys watching to the end, and as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Thanks, Airplane. Thank you so much. Oh, you little fucking That is a big motherfucker. It's insane because I'm, I'm wearing my swords which amplify certain sounds, and it sounds like I'm getting fucking bonsai bombed, like anytime they fly near the microphone.